Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ruby League History Channel. Today I'll be doing another video as part of my Retro Season Review series. This time it's going to be the Parramatta Reels in their 2007 NRL season. I've been a bit quiet on the channel recently and this is going to be the last video that I'm going to be doing for a while on this topic. I've been focusing on the other channel at the moment which is the football one. But in the next couple of weeks, I'll be re releasing some Ruby League content, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's crack on with Parramatta's 2007 NRL season. Parramatta finished the 2007 NRL season in fifth place. They were coached by Michael Hagan. The captains were Nathan Kalis for most of the season. However, Nathan Hindmarsh captained a few matches. The record crowd they got for the year was 20,113 against Manly in round 20. The average home crowd was just under 15,000. Luke Burt was the top point scorer and Jared Hayne was the top try scorer with 14 tries. Going into the 2007 NRL season, Parramatta in the previous two years, 2005 they were minor premiers but they unfortunately choked in the preliminary final against North Queensland. 2006 they finished in 8th place and went out in week 1. 2007 however, they managed to get Michael Hagan as the head coach of the club in his first season. Of course Michael Hagan used to coach Newcastle beforehand and also the Queensland State of Origin team. And he was the one that actually orchestrated Newcastle's 2001 Grand Final victory over Parramatta. So there were a lot of optimism going into the year that could he repeat the success he had at Newcastle with Parramatta. Parramatta, however, got off to a bad start in 2007. They were defeated 34 points to Edeen against New Zealand there over in Auckland in round one. And that was followed by a 31 points to 6 loss against the previous year's Wooden Spooners, South Sydney at Stadium Australia. However, the club managed to turn it around. They ended up winning three matches in a row after that. They defeated West Tigers, Canberra, 38 points to 6. By memory, I were actually at that game. And then in round 5, they easily accounted for Penrith. However, the club was brought back down to earth after losing against our rivals Canterbury in round six by three points. Very narrow loss to take there. And then in round seven, they lost against the newcomers, the Gold Coast. They were defeated 38 points to 12. However, I think the loss against the Gold Coast changed something in the playing group because they became a much different team after that. Uh, they defeated the Sydney Roosters quite comfortably, defeated North Queensland 44 points to 14, which back then were quite impressive because North Queensland were a good side back then. They defeated New Zealand 30 points to 6 and they easily accounted for the West Tigers 38 points to 8. The club would then defeat St George 20 points to 12 at Parramatta Stadium and by the halfway of the year they were sat in third place on the table. Following a buy and another impressive victory over the Sydney Roosters, in round 17 the club were humbled by Newcastle 34 points to 10 at Parramatta Stadium. But that loss doesn't really surprise me because Newcastle's always been a bit of a bogey team for Parramatta. In round 21, the club managed to get a win over their arch rivals Canterbury, defeating them 34 points to 22 at Stadium Australia, which left Parramatta in third place. Towards the back end of the year, though the form from the club were quite patchy, in round 22 they lost a one point thriller against Cunulla, 25 points to 24. Then another narrow loss to Melbourne in round 23, 14 points to 10. And then a third narrow loss in a row, they lost 14 points to 6 against St George down there in Wollongong. To close out the year though, in the final round at Parramatta Stadium, Parramatta defeated the Premiers from the previous year, Brisbane, 68 points to 22. And I remember that game really well. Tim Smith were on fire. Chris and Inu got a hat-trick. Jared Hayne got two tries. And even Ian Hindmarsh got two tries. In week one of the finals, the club played against New Zealand over in Auckland once again in the qualifying final. And I remember this match. I weren't really expecting a result from this. I thought that it might be a bridge too far for Parramatta. It's obviously tough to go to New Zealand at the best of times. But they won that qualifying final 12 points to 10 in front of 28,000 people over there in Auckland. 
and that would set up an elimination semi-final against the club's arch rivals Canterbury once again. And in that semi-final against Canterbury, in front of 50,000 people at Stadium Australia, Parramatta won 25 points to 6. And it's summit that was nearly 10 years in the making because nine years previous, Canterbury broke Parramatta hearts in that infamous preliminary final. Parramatta were 18-2 with less than 10 minutes to go and lost 32 points to 20 in extra time. And in this semi-final, Parramatta got their revenge over Canterbury. They knocked them out. I remember the match really well. Sonny Bill Williams got injured early for them. And from there, we just ran over the top of them and we never looked in trouble and we won quite convincingly in the end. And this set up a preliminary final match against Melbourne down there at Docklands, or as it was known back then, the Telstra Dome. And it was always going to re be a really tough task against Melbourne. They'd finished, I think, about eight or ten points clear of second place, won the minor premiership quite convincingly. At half time, things were quite close, but they ended up winning the match 26 points to 10. I think it was one of the first times that they introduced the chicken wing tackle. I think they popped the shoulder of Nathan Kalis and also some of the Melbourne players accused Jared Hain of, of diving and faking an injury. But in the end, they ended up winning the match, which ended Parramatta's season. And then we would find out three years later that Melbourne were over the salary cap that year. They're actually over the cap from 2006 to 2010. And by the time they got caught, they're over by, I think, 3.7 to 4 million quid. So not only did we lose this preliminary final, but when we find out three years later that the 2006 match that we lost against them, 2007 and the grand final in 2009, they were over and they were pretty much cheating everyone. So that really stole. Well, it weren't all doom and gloom from the club but towards the end of the year. The New South Wales Cup team won the grand final again for the third year in a row. They defeated North Sydney on the siren. I remember watching that game. So uh, Parramatta claimed their third success of New South Wales Cup victory, which is something I've always found about this club. We always seem to do very well in the lower grades and the lower divisions, but when it comes to the NRL, it never quite materialises both. It were good to see the club win some silverware in some capacity in 2007. If I were to look at a match that really stood out to me in that year, you can't go past that last round of the season against Brisbane, 68 points to 22. That were a clinic that Parramatta put on that day. It was one of the only times I've ever seen Brisbane beaten so convincingly like that, especially back in them days when they were a really good side. And uh, I think Especially in 2007, it were a year where some of the players had some really strong seasons. Mark Riddell, Nathan Hindmarsh, Tim Smith were back to his best. He had a quiet year in 2006, but he were back to his best in 2007. And then he also had the emergence of some of the other players like Chris Ninu. I believe it were his debut year in 2007, Fletty Matteo. Players like that, Luke Burt also had a really good year before he got injured, I believe. So... Overall, it was a successful year for the club, even though they didn't win the Premiership. But uh, it was obviously a lot better than what would come in 2008. But that concludes my video on Parramatta's 2007 NRL season. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I've been a bit quiet on this channel. I've been focusing on the other football channel recently. And I just didn't want to be making content just for the sake of making content. I know that some people out there do that, but I'm not one of those. So anyways, everyone, thanks for tuning in for this video. And I'll catch us all later in the next one, which will be coming out very soon. All right, tatty bye for now.